your head. Yes, I can hear myself as well. I was uh, making a short hint of the story that I would tell you that this modern technology is much simply in lights and now and then. The priest was preparing for service and prepared water and everything. with Jesus, 
in the manger. The heart of the Holy Eucharist is our Lord Jesus Christ demonstrating his love by giving his body. This is my body which is given for you. Then his blood, this is my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. We are then invited to draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with that you not the reference to us, for you, for you, God has this for you. Christ is born for you and for me. That's very important to us, for you. For us collectively, yes, but for us individually, yes indeed. So we are at the center of Christ's birth at Christmas and also at his death and resurrection at Easter. We are like the mighty dishwasher who by chance found a notary ticket on the sidewalk and then learned that he had won jackpot, millions, pounds, Christmas makes us all lucky dishwashers of God's spirit's love, which surprisingly shines upon us, transforming our lives, transforming our world beyond our wildest imaginations. There is the darkness in which we live. The darkness of our world, which we are all familiar with. The darkness which reveals itself by the violence which we find ourselves caught in, of which the recent terrible events in Paris pointed to that what Syria is about, what Iraq is about, the Middle East. In Palestine, the scholars, there is darkness about it, and this is our world. And yet, this darkness talks also about spiritual darkness, it speaks about the moral darkness. It is a darkness of not knowing God, which is a big crisis of our secular age. Many people don't believe in God. There is the darkness within our own lives, hidden secrets that we have. And this is what Isaiah was pointing to, that talking about and using the imagery of a great light shining in the darkness. It's the darkness of our lives, the darkness of our lives. And we see Christmas in darkness, in darkness. Let's think of ourselves, the darkness of our own lives. I recall the priest telling me about the funeral of the lady who died of cancer in his parish. She had not been a regular church before, but started attending services because she wanted to know the priest who was going to conduct a funeral and bury her. The woman's 
husband was not a church or either, but his man, God, accompanied his wife. He was a difficult man, and his relationship with his family was strained. In the process of going to church, he got friendly with the priest and was able to confide in him. Father Matthew, my dear brother, us priests, we carry a lot of secrets which people confide in us and which we have to keep and present to God. So there are things which we know at the middle of the family of God. And this is what happened here. Now, the man had been an officer in the Royal Navy during the Second World War. One day, a fire broke out in one part of the ship, and a decision was taken to contain the fire by sealing it off. The duty fell on this man to lock the doors, and unfortunately, there were three men in that part of the ship, and they died. After the war, he got married, he had children, he never told his family about this dark incident in his life. He kept the secret with his torment. He would get depressed, and he took the drink to try and tame the ghosts of the past, the demons that tormented him in the secret that he carried. To the day of his wife's death, he never told her of this incident. And there are many people who carry the darkest of hidden secrets. There is the darkness of trying to control life. You try to protect, to rescue, to, to charge, to manage the lives around you. Your children lives, the lives of your, your husband, your wife, your friends. And yet, this is just what we are powerless to do. Control. We forget that the lives of other people are not our business. They are their business. They are God's business because they all have wrong, whether they know God or not. Even our life is not really our business, but God's business. So leave it to God. Leave it God. This is the astonishing point of Christmas. It is a life transforming thought. We are God's business. That is why the incarnation of our new God is born for you, he died for you, he rose for you, and lives for us. We need to understand that. So, the darkness of the world and our lives speaks to us as if we are new, drifting about in life without a purpose, without a friend. And many of us believe this to be true. We believe it in the midst of the suffering world. That's why it's so much suffering. Yeah. We are not orphans. We forget God. Then surprisingly, the light bursts upon us. Like the lucky dishwasher that we are. God's hidden light shines on us, transforming our lives into our wildest imaginations. The breaking news of the gospel. The gospel writers, the message of Christmas, the breaking news is that Christ 
is the wonderful face of God, the mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And in this terms, what the Gospel writers, Isaiah and others, the prophets, seek to convey to us is the vital truth that in this child, in the man that he grew up to be, he is the very presence of God, the light which the world, the darkness of this world, cannot overcome. Like a fairy tale, we are all transformed in Christ, who makes us whole. Our life is revealed in a brand new light, with a brand new melody and dance, and in a way that we can sing. Let's hear brothers and sisters in the choir, the junior choir, singing so angelically. The glad, glad tidings of great joys for you and all humankind, so the angels proclaim. Christ has changed everything in time and space, art, music, literature, culture, politics. Our hope and center of ourselves and our world, it has all changed. Because if we thought we were a people alone, drifting about in life without purpose, without friend, if we thought that, it is not true. It is not true. For God is our friend, our creator. We are his children. And God is our life. And God comes for Savior in the incarnation of his Son, the Messiah, Christ, Emmanuel, God with us. At this time, even those who don't believe in God somehow stop and think and wonder that maybe we are special because of the birth of Christ. But we know in this life and as many have known before us and as many will know after us that in Christ we experience this healing, this transformation. If we can but open our hearts to his love we can be changed. Our world can be changed. So this child born for us is not the dogma of the church or the truths or structures, but the hidden God himself who creates, created the being. This is the heart of the Christmas message, stripped of all commercial exploitation it has been reduced to by a secular society. It is not about exchanging material gifts, but rather about experiencing a holy life, flowing from God's love in us. So that is why you see St. Paul said, I live It's about being gathered together as that great church father, St. Augustine of Hippo, once said, I find no safe place for myself save in you, in you, the very God in whom all lives have to be 
Before the night. 